one of the reasons I went to get the ketamine therapy is because I didn't know why I'm still on antidepressants. It's like one of the weirdest medicines that, you know, I was having a tough time when I was like 20 and I went in, they put it on, they put me on it or I agreed to be on it. You know, I, I mean, I took part in it and, and then now 20 years later, I'm still on it. So it's kind of like, like if you broke your leg, you wouldn't have a cast on forever probably. So some of that to me is like, how, what's going on here? Like, is this something I need to be on forever? So that's one of the reasons that I went in probably to check it out. You know, I wish I'd have had a better, I was in there with a therapist and I, I think they were just more of like there if I had an issue. Um, I sometimes wish that somebody would have been like prodding me more or telling me how to, it's almost like when you go snorkeling, that's what it kind of felt like a little bit. It was like I'm looking at a lot was going on. You know, if I felt like I'm a roller, I'm on a roller coaster. I felt like the world is kind. Of, I felt like I was on Space Mountain sometimes with my eyes closed. You know, just kind of like moving through. Like, did you have the round sh shapes or the square shapes? I mean, I th I mean, I think there was a turf war going on because there was a lot of there was some real. I think it was a lot of shapes out there. You know, it was definitely like somebody was. Um, I mean, I, I remember one time th yell, literally yelling out that I was a cryptocurrency. I thought I was <laughs> – like I went – it got pretty gnarly, you know? Like it got pretty gnarly. Like I remember one time thinking there's no way I'm going to end up back in my chair in this therapist's office. I don't know how I'm going to get there from yeah. where I am. Yeah, I had, I've and had so, some fun, you know. So that kind of stuff was kind of exciting. And I think sometimes I got too caught looking at the the the, the experience – and not using the experience right so that's why i wish that there had been more before i went in to get it that i had had more of an understanding of how to navigate the universe a little bit and how to use the experience yeah um that, because that i that i didn't have and that is sort of like um you can do a lot more with ketamine assisted psychotherapy you can use that place you're in to visit the pain that has brought you to this distressed state. Yeah, there was a moment, I remember, there was a moment where I got to see my dad, be around my dad, right? And I'd never, my dad died when I was like 16 and he was really older, man. He, he was 86 when he passed away and, and I was 16. So he was older when I was born, he was an adult, you know? He was senior citizen. But um, I got to have like this experience around him and it was like a real, like it felt like I was around him. And I got to let him, I, I got to, you know, I felt like my dad never knew how much I loved him. I felt like I had just never gotten to an age where I could tell him that yeah. I loved him, you know? And I didn't realize how much that was kind of haunting me, I think, somewhere inside of me, you know? Like, um, yeah, exactly. I just never knew, like, that that was such a big thing going on underneath me somewhere. And, uh, and I literally got to have, a moment or a little bit a couple moments with him in a emotional state kind of it felt like anyway to me it felt very real to me that i was letting him know uh how much i loved him you know? yeah and that and that's priceless because there's no there was no other way to do that i mean there may there may have been but i i hadn't found that yet yeah that that is like core to what um ketamine is psychotherapy gives people access to it's like those little gaps those little holes in our heart that that happen to us when we're young shape a lot of our life and so to be able to reach back in time and and find yourself then and there and that that sort of that grief pain of separation that you you didn't get to have with him you could connect to yourself and and sort of complete almost in a way like the grieving process so you could release that tension from yourself yeah that 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 distress that's that's like that's in there and it's always in there and it's it, you don't know how to get it out and you're pushing through life and a couple of decades go by and you're like oh, i'm still haunted by things and some people are not able to even see some of those things it felt really intimate you know yeah I remember, I mean, right when I started going under, I just started tears just like rolled out of my eyes, you know? Like, I don't even know what was going on really, you know? Yeah. I think it could have just been like, I mean, me, I'm always probably 30% sad, so who knows what it was, you know? But 
Um, but I remember it just being pretty emotional right out of the gate. And the first day I was dehydrated, literally just from like crying, I think half of the whole session. Like, and some of it, I didn't even realize I was crying. Like I didn't even really feel it because I was kind of also, you get kind of, you're kind of an anesthetized in a way. Mm -hmm. So the main part of me that's still awake is kind of this, kind of that all knowing place inside of your head where you have ideas and stuff, you know? Yeah. Like whenever you're thinking about something, you envision something like that place, you know? I, I have had an, uh, quite a few patients that, and I, I tell them this, I'm like, hey, you know, they a lot of them tend to feel pretty quiet. Like they have like um, all the, the, the mental movie is sort of taking a break when they're, when they're done for their session for the day and they kind of like, I'm like, yeah, just roll with that. Don't do any homework. Just sort of like try to, you know, I, I try to keep them on zero. Um, and I, and I say it is, you know, very possible that if you just start burst out into tears later tonight, that's normal. Yeah. That means like you're, you've connected to something and that's like an overdue release. That's fascinating, man. Yeah. I noticed after a couple of treatments, I'd had an idea. I was running one day and I just had like a good idea and I used to have good ideas all the time. I mean, I'm just, I'm judging my own ideas, but I thought they were pretty good, but, but I used to have ideas a lot and I just for, like a year, I just hadn't even gotten an idea. Like I've just been kind of living with the pieces of every day, you know? Yeah. And it's been fine, life has been fine. I'm not I'm not complaining, I'm not asking for any pity, I'm just explaining where I'm at. But but I hadn't found it, gotten anything new to come out of my brain, right. you know? And so I noticed that. I was running by some turkeys somewhere at this park and then, I don't know, I just got like an idea that was like fun and it made me laugh, it made me smile. I was like, oh man, what a gift. Like when something's able to just kind of travel through us and make us feel good, which is how we probably should be a lot of times, you know, yeah. is to be a conduit for joy to at least pass through right. instead of being kind of a um, a place where something has put up a fence or something has put up like a firewall or, you know, different elements like you're saying. Yeah. And that's what I want to say. Like, I'm not telling anybody to go get this therapy or, or saying that this is, you know, I wanted to have an experience with it because um, I'm going to try to get off of antidepressants. Yeah. So uh, I'm working with my doctor now and try and like slowly wean myself off, um, which is some which is cool. The the, the place that I went the, there, they have like some follow through there with like trying to help me like do that and and manage that. So I'm excited about that. And I'm still working with my regular therapist. Um, but yeah, I definitely wanted to have the experience just so I knew kind of what it was like um, and yeah. what's possible. Um, you know, I love to kind of figure out how I'm thinking and feeling and why and stuff like that, you know? Um, so it's it's nice to kind of see if what things I can get get through and get away from. And I, I find that- Like anchors I can pull up kind I of. I find that, you know, in, in my practice, about half of my patients don't get ketamine. Like we, we, you know, it's sort of like, why are you here? And they're, they're more like, they don't know why they're there. They're like, they, they want access to well-being. They want relief from distress. That's what they really want. Right. But they come in with like diagnoses. And I'm like, well, let's talk about what you, what's really going on. And then, you know, we, we talk and we, we got to, you know, it's like, we got to get to know each other. It's not like, I'm like, Hey, yeah, here, get out. Um, and they may turn into ketamine patients once we find like hard stops, places that are, are you know, like I, I shared earlier, I uh, had that lady, she wasn't a ketamine patient, okay? And as we got to know each other and I was sort of helping shape her therapy using other things, we she felt comfortable sharing me with some pretty disturbing stuff and then she shared some even more disturbing and then she, she couldn't, she stopped. I was like, um, yeah, it's sort of like let's let's change gears because we're running into some very emotionally distressing things that she couldn't articulate at that point. Mm. And in order to get through those, we, I wanted to protect her. So that's when we slid over into the the ketamine room, and now she's she's about she's in process and she's autumn, you can just see the light in her eyes now. She's you know it's like she it's like it's not just like go get ketamine. It's like why are you here? Right. And and that's why we we talk about well, what's going on. And well, there was an experience. One, I had an experience at one point where I felt like I ended up like in a corner of the world. Kind of, it was kind of like I felt like you ever been in like a video game and you get stuck somewhere on it and you can't even move. Like your guy gets stuck and yeah. you're just. 
I felt like I got stuck at like the edge of the universe, like where the universe, like we, like I finally found like the two walls of the universe, like the ends of it, and I got stuck like in the corner, and I don't know what was going on. Were you, were just, you leaving the chair or coming back to the chair? I was on my way back to the chair. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, you know, because like, did you feel like you were like getting light in the chair, and then like your fingers started to get all? And then yeah, you, you know, I didn't even notice that. I just remember kind of talking in a conversation and then next thing you know i go on this ride yeah and i'm not even talking that much anymore i'm just kind of on this journey people are so i i talk to my patients a lot and they some of them remember some of them don't but um they, they come in different they come in different like personalities like you can kind of there's i'm starting to get a there's different types that come in there like i got my musicians and they they start singing for me, and uh, you know they're belting it out or they're composing, right there in front of me, and I'm like, this is cool. And then you know you got the guys who my my trees are running off the screen, and my one kid who tried to hop up and run out, but he forgot he was on ketamine oh. and he can't move. And, Dang, uh, that's he, crazy. He, he didn't even get out of the chair. You could just see it. He was like, oh no no no, <laughs> and I was like, it's okay, man. And uh, that's crisped out, man. He was probably all crisped out. Yeah, he he had some issues. It gets, I mean, it's definitely gnarly. I was, I, I, it didn't feel like, I guess in some ways it felt like a drug. It felt like an experience to me. Right. You know, um, I felt like I was kind of grateful for the experience. I was grateful to be back from the experience whenever I got back from the like trip or whatever you kind of go on during it or whatever, like the visual, the experience, the out of body kind of experience. I felt grateful whenever I got back to my chair because there was moments where I was like, I am never... You know, I don't care. Yeah, they'll, I'll never, they'll never find me. And the, yeah, it's like I'm lost. Like, where am I in the world, in yeah, the universe? They will never find me. I was at like, I was in Atlanta. I was in Castlevania, that video game for when I was a kid. I was in some, I was on the back of someone's neck. I was, a, there was a lot. It was, I, a, I was sliding down stuff, a lot of like moving along huge. I don't know if it was like electronic land sides of walls I had, a, anyway. I had a lady recently she could hear um i got like these pictures of a forest or in my one of my rooms and she could hear the forest wow and then she was like then she could hear a lawnmower like and i was like well, that's pretty cool you know because it was she was not disturbed she was just like oh yeah i can hear the forest and i was like that was a first yeah. like the auditories were were are not as common that's strong Hope you enjoyed that video and you can watch another and you can watch this one. You can watch this one. Different options, different choices. Some guy just brings you one option, not this guy. Two options. Watch one. This one or this one.